You ever been in a place to where you're not stuck, but you just don't hear when it comes to God speaking to you? And then you can use different things such as, oh, God spoke to me, but then I had to remember I ate a burrito last night. You know, so it was like, it probably wasn't, okay? And then there's those times to where he is talking to you. You're just not sitting still to listen. You're just not sitting still. We get a lot of distractions, you know, with things like the phones and, you know, different things. You know, things like just minor. I mean, so minor that it doesn't really even matter. In fact, I'll even share that with you at the end of this. It doesn't matter. And so what I want to do today is just ask a simple question for us. Is where do you start? Now, I'm going to take it here today is that everybody in this room knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. But I've also learned that any group larger, as large as we have right now, there might not be somebody here who does know Jesus. And if that's the case, then you have that opportunity later on in the uh, service to come on up and just give that profession. But I'm going to base it on where do you start after salvation? A man by the name of Henry Ford, we know him as the founder of the Ford vehicle. He said this, Life is a series of experiences, each, of a, each one of which makes us bigger, even though sometimes it's hard to realize this. For the world was built to develop character, and we must learn that the setbacks and the grieves which we endure, help us in our marching onward. Think about that. Our lives, we sit here today. We sit here today with experiences. Every single one of us here, experiences. We've had experiences. Good, bad, ugly. The old movie. Good, bad, ugly. We know what they are. All of us here identify what they are. Drug addiction, relationships, divorce, cancer, health, even mental illness. We have to put that in there. And there's many more. Each one of you can identify with something there or you have something. These type of experiences have challenges, sometimes very difficult. There is no doubt they're difficult. What we learn, though, in these experiences, we develop the character of God. We develop that character that God has for us. And what's really neat about that is that he is pleased with us today. Right now, sitting here in this room, he is pleased with us. Regardless of what you're going through, I can look out and say there's something going on in this room. There's no doubt. I can see it. I can see it. So just for a minute, turn those something wrongs going on in your life just for a minute and just tune in not to Raymond, but to the Spirit of God. And ask Him to give you that peace. And I'm going to help with that going forward. Now, when we do, we move forward. How many of us been stuck? We were stuck here at 8.15, 8.30. We were stuck. We really were. We got unstuck. We got unstuck, <laughs> right? We did. We got unstuck. And it was really fun. It really was. A good example of that is I'll use my wife and myself as an example. Just a little bit of transparency. There's some of us who know the bigger story. 
are, as Paul Harvey said, the rest of the story. <laughs> as of September 22nd, next week, actually, next Friday, we've been married 45 years. Amen. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I am absolutely proud of that. And I can also tell you that I'm more madly in love with her today than I was yesterday. No, and I mean that, but we had experiences of setbacks in our lives. From day one of the marriage, it could look good. You know, you can get away with the socks on the floor, you know what I mean, and get away with that kind of stuff. You really can. But can you get away with other things that, such as these experiences? Health. Addiction. We've, we face those challenges. And here's what we learned, and this just happened really, it's always happened, but it just happened, is when my son said, Dad, remember, always look up. Amen. Now, let me tell you the story about that. I didn't want to give too much to him. He doesn't like that enough, but enough to say that was profound. But what he was referring to, he works as a pilot for a large airline. And of course, for him, he's in the airport a lot, right? I mean, he is. And he's walking around in this outfit. Well, guess who's attracted to him? Everyone who has lost everyone who has lost, which would include all of us understand in an airport, you can easily get lost. And he always kept telling me, I couldn't figure it out. It took me three times in an airport to finally get it because I wasn't listening. Remember I said that earlier? He said, Dad, all you have to do is look up. And then I said, explain yourself. What do you mean? Because I'm sure not being driven by God walking me as a blind man through an airport. He said, no, look at the signs. <laughs> he did. Look at the signs. They'll tell you gate 31. Right turn, left turn. They'll tell you baggage claim. Now, I've got to be honest with you. My son, in his mind, you don't want to know sometimes what's in his mind. I have a hard time, too, sometimes. But in his mind, he just wants to say to them, listen. Look up. Look at the signs. Quit asking me. <laughs> the signs will tell you. Well, what do the signs represent? When you look up and you look at the signs, what does that represent? God, look up. Signs, truth. The Word of God. This is a great book. It really is. We'll, we'll read out of it today. But let me tell you a greater book. Somebody hold their Bible up for me. There it is. There it is. There it is. That's the book. That's the book. Looking up to God and then knowing that the truth is in the Word of God. You talk about a, a lampstick or a guide light to your life when you're dealing with experiences. Put that combination together. Let's get started. Many times, we have a difficult time answering this question. What is our purpose? Just want you to think about that a second. What is our purpose? There's a lot of books out there on a lot of stuff that will give you basically a success story if you follow my steps. A lot of books out there. Motivational, et cetera, et cetera. Now listen, don't get me wrong, there's some great ones out there. John C. Maxwell is a great example. But in this case, we have to know first of all what is our purpose. And so let me tell you what that looks like. But before I said that, I missed something. I, I, this is important. I'm, let me go back to looking up real quick, and then I'll move back. The word in Job, chapter 22, 26, says this. 
Then you will take delight, then you will take delight in the Almighty God when you look up. Job 22, 26. Many times, again, we forget about what our purpose is. We think it's everything else. Our experiences, yes, it's all part of life. There's no doubt. You can't get away from it. But I can say this, with this answer in the scripture, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And here it comes, right here. Your purpose to glorify your Father in heaven. If I may, step one. Point one. Not a step, not a point. It's a fact. The word says. It says. Look up and glorify God. Honor Him. And then let's talk a little bit about a part of that purpose. And that is to worship Him. Even when it's tough. I was always told, and I still stand by it, there's us in here, all of us probably at some time have had a hard time just picking up the Word of God and just read. Because we're told, we're drilled to say, read the Word of God, read the Word of God every day, 8.30 in the morning, right? 5 o'clock in the morning. We hear that. And then some say, I can't do it, so I do it at night. Well, I fall asleep when I do it at night. We have all kinds of facts about reading the Word of God. But I do know this fact that Sometimes it gets pretty difficult. Sometimes it's just because of our experiences, our circumstances, our situations. But I'm going to encourage you to say, push yourself to do it. Push yourself not because you have to, because you want to. There's a big difference. You want to. In John 4.23... But the time is coming, indeed, it's here, now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. Amen. Praise is a part, there is no doubt. And people who don't even have a good voice like myself or... I think I can play kind of thing. It is a form of worship. Sure it is. But the true worship is just like when I see Shannon in here. And I have to come in here and see what's going on. And then I end up standing in here with her just for a minute. Then I say, come touch me. Come on. I need some. I need some. Right? True worship. No music, nothing. Just going. Right? Just going. True worship. God is looking for us. And I can promise you in this room, there is everyone who has that ability. Not one of us do not. To what level is your prerogative, if I may? Some of us can't be Shannon in that sense. And nobody, we don't have to. Shannon doesn't want it to be that way. Pam, I just saw you, Shannon. That's why I, I, that's just put in there. But there's some of us who just like to just sit still. Some of us like to put earbuds on. Some of us like to bang on the drum, play a guitar. The time is coming. It's here right now, everybody. It's here today. It is here today. He's looking for true worshipers to honor Him, to praise Him, to glorify Him. And from here, we go out and be that light. But how about this? In here, we can be that light. And we have days that we're not. Once you accept that purpose, understanding that, it gives you an opportunity to know this 
next point. Your value. And what is that value in God? So before we start with that word value, let's look at the definition of value. Pretty simple. Worth, importance, merit. Those three words is all you need to remember. So let's say them again. Everybody together with me. Worth, Worth. importance, Worth. and merit. <coughs> Capture those words. Hold on to them. Place them. Store them. Right now, just store them. Ask God. Ask them, Spirit. Store them. That's the value he has in you. You accepting him, he accepting you. Even when it doesn't work, he's still accepting you. He still sees value in you. Even in those experiences, everything about. The thing about value, it affects others. Also yourself, of course. It gives you confidence. Encourage to change in the living in living in the moment. Change in the living of the moment. How many times have we heard that word "living in the moment"? Rodney and I had a just conversation about that, about living in the moment. And then he asked me a simple question: Is there something wrong with? Um, is there something wrong with planning ahead? And I said, "Well, to what degree? If you talk to me from the corporate world." I can tell you right now, I've learned day one, day seven, day 30, day 90, day 120, 10 years later. And Rodney went up and he said, oh my gosh, 10 years later, are you kidding me? He did. How can you do that? Well, it's simple. It is. Goals out there, journeys, places of landing. And I told my story of what it looks like five years from now. You have to ask them what it was. Five years from now, where am I going to be? And mine was based on relationship with my family five years from now. It's really what it was. I want to read something out of um, the book, Courage to Change. Does anybody, is anybody familiar with this? Pam, I know you are. Wally, yeah. This is my, my daily reading, Al-Anon. And um, I won't go into the details, but I need this book also. I read it daily and I attend meetings weekly. Myself, personally. I need it. And so I want to read this because I think it ties in together with this part. So. <clears throat> September 13th. Each moment of this day is precious. And I will make it count. I will use this time to enrich my life and to improve my relationship with my God, other people, and myself. Each of the 12 steps can help me to pursue this goal regardless of my circumstances. Meetings, Al-Anon, telephone calls, and Al-Anon literature all help me to apply the steps to what is happening in my life. Here and now, in this moment, I can make a positive change. Perhaps I will think of time as a special kind of checking account. I have 24 hours to spend. By putting Allen on principles to work in my life today, I am choosing to use these hours to grow, enjoy, and improve. I even have an opportunity to learn from my mistakes since a brand new 24 hours can begin at any moment. 
This day offers me a chance to make a new start at living. How can I make the best use of it? We start with gifts. Merits come from what we make of them. It's a choice. It's a choice. Each one of us is responsible for that. Not me telling you. <coughs> what are the results? We're anchored in purpose. And value gives us renewed trust. And life that has meaning. You believe it took me this long to get there? That's a good thing. I look forward for the next five years. I am so grateful that I took the moment to continue walking towards my purpose to get here. So I look forward to new adventures, new journeys, <clears throat> not final destination. Let me tell you already, I already got that one figured out. Eternity, final destination, which is only another continuation. Those in Christ. I'm going to leave with this thought, okay? It's like part two. Not that we discuss it, but I need to put it in play. So there'll be another time I can come back and talk about it. So I'm going to read some facts, known facts. Okay? And at the end, I want you just to yourselves answer. You can shout it out if you want to, what the answer is. So here we go. What is holding you back? This is coming out of John C. Maxwell. Your Roadmap for Success. This is his book. One of many. 60% of our worries are totally unwarranted. They never come to pass. 20% of our worries are focused on our past, which is completely out of our control. <coughs> Excuse me. 10% of our worries are based on the things so petty that they make no difference in our lives. In our lives of the remaining 10%, four to 5% can, could be considered legit. According to these statistics, they show that any time or energy you give to worries is totally wasted and counterproductive 95% of the time. Is that sinking in a little bit? Just enough? 5%. What is the answer? The number one culprit. Now, I'm going to talk about salvation, so that's, that, I'm not looking for that answer right away. So what is the culprit in this? For later, fear. That's the culprit. Fear causes a lot of stuff. Unnecessary. So, quickly, when you put the purpose in life, worshiping God, glorifying God, you're anchored there. You're anchored. It doesn't mean it doesn't come back and get you. It doesn't come back and reinvite itself. It doesn't come back and have a new invitation. It just means you have some tools that you can use. That's the truth of God, His Spirit, and His Word. So as uh, Scott comes up, he's going to play some music just as we're uh, going into ministry time. Um, I think at that time, I'd ask the people I've asked to come up. Um, where are you? Wally? 
Come on up, and uh, Pam, D. Thank <laughs> you. 